Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about isentropic processes. I mentioned these a long time ago. If you're watching all these videos, you've seen it then. Where I mentioned, hey, that polytropic process thing, eventually it's going to be an isentropic process. And what is isentropic? Well, it's simply a process during which entropy remains constant. Does this really happen? In some processes, yes, it actually really does. In other places, we just say, well, it's closed, so it's good enough. So putting this in little letters and numbers and variables, it's simply saying that your entropy change is zero, where the final entropy is equal to the initial entropy. So where do we see this? A lot of times we see it in turbines or compressors where they're very, very close to isentropic. And so we can say that. Uh, eventually, we'll come into like efficiencies for turbines. We'll say that that's supposed to be an efficiency, goodness, is like equal to 0.95. And so we'll use this to correct it in the future. But for a while at least, we're going to say that they're mostly isentropic. Um, and as a note, saying something is isentropic, it is not a bad idea because it gives you an upper estimate. You know that things are not really isentropic in most cases, and so it's going to be less work output, more work input, but it gives you a nice maximum or minimum there. And on our TS diagram, this is just a nice straight line going straight down. PV is a curve. Okay, now that's not enough information for just one video, so let's do an example with this. So, example, the power of trains. So we have here is an isentropic steam turbine. The process is five kilograms of steam, that's a mass flow rate, at three megapascals, that's my input pressure, which is exhausted at 50 kilopascals and 100 degrees Celsius. It also says that 5% is diverted to a feed water heating at 500 kilopascals. So we lose some of it here, that's 5%. 95% goes here. And we want to find the power produced by this turbine. Use the steam tables. Okay, so nothing too crazy here. We're going to walk through kind of how we do most things. Conservation of mass, conservation of energy to solve this problem. So let's draw a process diagram. So here's my TS curve. I have my max pressure, my middle pressure, and my low pressure. I put it all in the megapascal, oh, sorry, middle ones in megapascals, just to make it easier for myself fit everything in there. Now, if I actually look for this at 50 kilopascals and 100 degrees Celsius, that's the only one I know everything for, what I'll find is that this is in the superheated region if I look at the tables. Since everything else is isentropic, that means that 0.2 and 0.1 are also in the superheated tables. So if you're just wondering how I place those, I used the only one that I had enough information for, which is that third state, to place the rest of them. Now let's do conservation of energy. So we know this is a cycle, or sorry, it's a, um, a turbine, and it is an open system. I have air flowing in and out of it, but it is a steady flow system. And so since it's a steady flow system, that means that there is no change in energy in my system, and so my energy in is gonna be equal to my energy out. And so what kind of energy do I have? Well, it doesn't mention any kinetic energy changes. It doesn't mention any potential energy changes. So it's just enthalpy. So I have the enthalpy flowing in, and then I have the enthalpy flowing out as well as some work going out from it. And so from that, I can then determine what my work output would be if I knew the mass flow rates and I knew the enthalpy. So let's figure out those flow rates. This is pretty easy, it's not that bad. It says that 5% went down this pathway which means it's just 5% of our mass flow rate, which was five kilograms per second. And the other one would be 95% of that. So that's pretty simple. We have all of our mass flow rates now, but we don't have our enthalpies. We need to solve for that. So let's get working on that. Okay, we're gonna check the tables for the enthalpies. Now, we only know the temperature for one of the states. The process though is isentropic, which means that entropy is constant and that means that entropy is our second property. So we're going to use that to find all the details of the other two states. Because if I know pressure and I know entropy, I know enough to put those states in their place. So the bottom guy right here, I can get the entropy from it. So we're starting at the bottom because we know enough there. We have a pressure, we have a temperature. I go to my superheated tables. Why superheated? Because this is the wrong temperature for this pressure. It's too high, which means it's superheated. And then from that, I'm just going to pull out two values. One, the enthalpy, I need that to do my conservation of energy to solve for the power output. The second one, the entropy, I'm getting that just so I can tell where I am on this TS diagram and solve for the others. 
Now, it's not nearly as fun when you have an entropy to try to find it in the diagrams, but you can. You just gotta look for it. And luckily for us, it gave us a pressure, so you're just gonna be looking up and down just like you would for temperature. And in fact, let's go ahead and show you that real quick. So one second, I'm gonna jump over to the textbook and we'll see it. Okay, so here I am at my textbook. We're gonna to go to the superheated water tables because it was water going through it. And so I know what the entropy was. It was 7.6953. And I also know my pressures. My pressure was half megapascal and three megapascals. So I'll start with half megapascal. And all I want to know is what my enthalpy is. That is this column right here. I'm going to use it entropy to find it. So let's go ahead and draw on this screen real quick. And we can do that. Where are you? Screenshot, there you are. Capture full page. Beautiful. Okay, so I have the right pressure. And I know that it's somewhere in between here. This is my line, which means my enthalpy is somewhere in between these two. So that's what I want you to find here. I'm looking at the entropy. This is the entropy column. And then I know my value is somewhere in between these two values. I would have to interpolate. Now I've done a lot of interpolation in the past, so I'm not gonna do that right this second. But I will just go, I'll go ahead and give you the equation for it. You can plug things in here. We'll call this guy right here the low, this one right here the high, or L and H. And so what I'm gonna get then is my enthalpy is equal to my HL plus S minus SL. All that times right now room here. H high minus HL over S high minus SL. So that's where we get it, okay? You plug in your values, you will have the value for the enthalpy then. Now it's isentropic, and so I'm gonna do that for both half a megapascal as well as three megapascals. So I was gonna need it for both. And so I'm down here now, I found three megapascals. I'm gonna just go ahead and screenshot one more time. So I need to find two values, where it's right between those two values. So it's in right here, it's in between those two values, which means my enthalpy is somewhere between this value and this value. So I match the pressure and then I match the entropy. It's very much the same as if I matched it with temperature. Like if I knew my temperature, I would go over the temperature, I'd go over to my value. It's the same exact thing. And as a note, if your entropy is somewhere outside of these bounds, that means that you're in the wrong table. Actually, sorry, if it's too high, it just means it didn't go far enough and that sucks. But if it's too low, you're in the wrong table. We're not in the wrong table though because its value makes sense for this table. Okay, so with that, let's jump back to the PowerPoint. Here we are. So with that, I can get my enthalpy for both of those. I went ahead and interpolated for you here. I used the pressure, which was given the problem statement and the entropy to find this. And once I have all these things, I said to plug and chug. I had an equation for it. I plug in each of their mass flow rates And I multiply that by the enthalpy of each of those to then figure out how much energy is flowing in and out of my system. The difference between those two is my power, which I solved for right here. And we've got it. Okay, so I hope this helped you realize why we use entropy in these problems. The biggest reason is often because we'll have an isentropic process. And even when it's not isentropic for turbines and compressors where we use these equations the most, we have ways of correcting it, and you'll still be doing very similar things. That's it for this time. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.